social media is on fire right now. In fact, the rattle in Nigeria is so loud, much more louder than this old railway track. Well, it is that of very dark black man and Bob Risky. The audio that you're about to hear is a detailed one of the activities of Bob Risky. Recall that an audio got leaked, and in that audio, Bob Risky could be heard saying that he did not spend time in prison for the crime of mutilation of Naira notes. He said he had paid to scrub out money laundry charges against him. And this, he claimed he was um, compelled by the ESCC. Having looked into his account, they saw a huge amount of money and they said, where did you get this money from? How have you been able to afford that location that you live on the island of Lagos? And where did you get this $10,000, this $100,000 paid into your account? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today you're about to learn, you're about to hear what you have never heard before. Who is this godfather? Who is Femi Falano? Who is Faz, the bad guy, the son of Femi Falano? What exactly is going on here? And what about the correctional center, the prisons? What is their involvement? What is this racket? You will get to hear from someone who had somehow found a way to meander his way. In fact, this person committed a crime so that it can be in to expose the rot in our system. Ladies and gentlemen, let us proceed. But before we proceed, like, share, tap on the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Not the battle of the other one. This one is another one. Now, this one was recorded on the 16th of May, 2024. Now, the reason why I want to post this one now is because, to be honest, I was waiting for people that said they want to file a lawsuit to file the lawsuit. The ones where they say he made an innuendo, he did this one, did this one. In all honesty, yeah, I was waiting for that. But as nobody don't send the paper here, yeah, maybe they'll send them tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. They'll send them today. Today is Monday. You understand? But before they do it, let me post. Now, now no law. Now, now no innuendo. My own be say the corruption that went down in that prison must be unveiled. And anybody that has a hand in it must be casted. You understand? For those that have reputation that their name is involved, it is easy. Just clear yourself of this thing and penalize whoever is spreading rumors with your name. If it is rumor, that is if it will be true. You understand? So all those talk of this thing, you people don't scare me one second. I swear to God Almighty, I am not even scared. I look at the whole thing, I'm like, okay, let me see what they are trying to do. When they are done, continue what we want to do. You understand? So truth is, if you want Nigeria to be better, you won't respect nobody. I swear to God, forget respect. Nigeria can't be better if we keep on doing all selected criticism. Is that what it is? But anyways, let's start. Hello? Hello? Hello, hi. Bob, how are you doing? I'm okay. Oh. You know, are you out yet? I'm not out yet. Oh, my God. Okay, so quick, but I don't have enough time because, you know, mm. I just had to, I can't really, I don't, the reason why I'm being trying to talk to you about this is because obviously I've not been talking to anybody. I've not been, mm. people have been sending me so much messages about how I was pregnant because I don't want anybody to know I have my phone. Yeah. Uh, first things first, I don't want anybody to know I have my phone. That is why, but risky, I've not been responding to people sending any messages. But let's continue. Uh, I don't want to talk to somebody that I know that uh, I can trust. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. So, uh, obviously, you, you knew what happened to me, right? Mm -hmm. So, before the EF city, of course, they were, invest they were investigating me, mm -hmm. you know, about the cars, money, and everything, all this well. So, I knew one day one day would come for me like this mm -hmm. because of the noise and all that. But it's, it's fine. So when they were investigating me, they put my account, they freeze my account. Obviously, they don't want me to do any transaction on it. So while they are doing the, mm. their ongoing investigation. Mm. Okay. Now, before we continue, the revelation of EFCC in the House of Rep, EFCC said they never froze his account. Now, Bobby is saying his account was frozen. Let's continue. So, but I'm so glad that they did not. At first, they had the money laundry charges in, yeah. their, in their charge because of the money they saw in my account and all the money that passed through my account, at least. So they just sell so money, but we were able to beg them mm. and give them some money so they can drop the money laundry charges with this. Mm. 
Now, he said they saw some money in his accounts and some money that passed through his accounts. So they investigated him for money laundry. But they begged and they paid the FCC some money and the money laundry charges were dropped. This is another record in entirely. So let's continue, anyways. I can't be facing money laundry charges. Go for it. Mm. You know, spraying our money. I'm not saying that one. I'm just looking for something to just hold me. Yeah. Just eat that. Mm. It's not like I'm the only one that spraying money. Yeah. There are a lot of people spraying money out there. Can I say, but you choose, you want to uh, convince me because mm. of spraying money. And, you know, that's quite weird. Mm. But, you know, me, I'm strong. And I'm ready for anything that comes my way because. I don't know. I don't know. No, obviously, I knew the old MV8, the ATAR, which is only arm, which is only arm. I knew one day, one day, to get to this, you know. And but, but, another thing that made me happy was the fact that they did a proper investigation on me and they noticed that I am not into money laundry mm. and I'm not into fraud. Yeah. Every money, the car, they came to my house, they carried my car now. They carried my car, they carried everything, you know, because what they, they, they thought coming to me, they will see people I do business with. So, yes, he went to his house, they carried his cars. While we were out in the house of Red, the FCC said they did not freeze his account. Now, Bob is saying his account was frozen and the FCC even went to his house to carry his car. Let's continue. This ring lights, bless you, don't we go. WhatsApp or an email. But it also that they were not able to find any, any of such. My money is legit. I keep saying this thing, but people don't believe. They keep they think I'm into fraud or I'm into picking money for politicians or whatever. But they run a proper checkup and they couldn't even find any of that on me. All the money I have. This same person that is saying that they saw some money that passed through his account. Do you understand? After saying the truth the first time, like saying don't know, saying don't cast. He completely tries to be correct what he said. So in one breath, you're saying they saw some money in your account that you paid the FCC. In another breath, you're saying, oh, the money that you're having is legit money. But let's continue anyways. All the money I have are genuine. And the sources are, are like most of my influences. You know, my like that day I called the old man was spending 10,000 and pounds and i think that it's for it's for influencing so you know like people they, they don't know how i charge i charge a lot of money for influencing they don't know you know so but i made them to understand that i charge as far as hundred thousand dollars to influence hundred thousand dollars for influencing then the hundred thousand dollars for influencing ecfc soon i'm really mad. nana i'm really curious of the amount of ecfc saw in this account you understand uh okay let's go on so if you think you cannot do it all fingers are equal. People, some other people do it, and trust me, God bless, God bless the also. Mm. So, you know, they did all that, and obviously, I met a very terrible judge. The judge wasn't coming. The judge wasn't there as well. Coming, coming. He's not there. Okay, can you excuse me on the phone? Yeah. So, wait, wait, wait. Before we continue, coming, coming. That means Bob Risky will just say, yeah, like a maid, like somebody helping him in the house. Obviously, this part, you will know that he is not in prison. But the good part is that the person now asked him. Let's continue. Um, when, when are you like this? Um, um, trust me, so I don't want to lie to you. You're my person. Mm. I'm not in prison. But I'm around there. They, oh. they go in an apartment, oh, you okay. know, because of my court father. Mm. My court my court father was able to say, never, you will not see another prison. Let the world think that they think you could never, mm. you know. So I was able to talk to the doctor um, controller in Nigeria. And he said that in as much as Bob is not, Bob is not, they really have a problem with Bob. If Bob is not posting anything, Bob is not saying anything, Bob is not doing anything. That they can put me close to the place. So I can always come inside and see people as I see. I'm welcoming my family. Yeah. And nobody needs to know, do you understand? So, you know, I have... So basically, Bob was put outside the prison, close to the prison in an apartment. So anytime he has like a visitor, he will quickly come inside the prison and welcome his visitor and his family members. Now I remember that when we were at the House of Friends for the investigation, one of the prison wardens said, oh, he has a list of the people that came to visit Bob. So basically, anytime that Bob, people want to come and visit Bob, they'll quickly tell him to rush and come back to the prison to come and see the people that want to visit him. Let's continue. So I'm, I'm just close, I'm close to the premises, but I'm not in that because they're all scared of why do, why do you want to put in a new facility where you know they're the scared of uh, harassment and everything so so but nobody knows this information it's just you okay. so yeah that's uh, that's that aside there secondly uh my my co-father has done a lot that's why i don't want to call you for any more requests because putting me out here alone in this apartment i am well furnished apartments alone is is something you pay the whole lot so my lawyer called me and said so if they are trying, he got me a son. My godfather got me a new son. So mm -hmm. now we are trying to get the pardon from the federal. You heard, the godfather gave him a son. He got him a son. 
Now, in the other recording I played, he said he spoke to Faust, and Faust spoke to his father, according to the other one. And in this other one now, he's saying that um, his godfather got him his son, meaning the story of his son. I don't know if it's true, but this is the second time he's calling his son in two different um, conversations with two different people. Now, um, you heard him, he said the well-furnished apartment that his godfather got for him. Wow, this is crazy. I really want to know this godfather, and I really want to know if this is how it works with the Nigerian prison. So let's ask ourselves the question, how many people really went to prison, all these big, big men, where they say they didn't... Did Evans the kidnapper actually go to prison? Now, I'm really curious about the rich people that have gone to prison. But anyways, let's continue. Um, I got my That's a question uh, from President. I'm trying to get a pardon. Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to get a pardon from him. That is the only one that can actually take me out here ASAP. Normally, I'm supposed to finish my term by July. Mm. Or if I'm able to get the uh, uh, amnesty, that's the pardon. I'm going to leave here the first week of next month. Right. But the money he was asking for, the, well, it's a big sum, not just me, we'll call it mm. So we should pay 10 And that's the thing I can even transfer. Again, in the other recording, when he said he spoke to Faz, and Faz said he was going to talk to his father, he said they paid 10 million. Now again, he's saying that the son collected upfront of 5 million and the total money the son requested was 10 million. However, in this part, he didn't call Faust and he didn't talk about the father. In this part, he just talked about his son. Do you understand? But in the other record, he, he made mention of a name, you know. Okay, well, anyways, let's continue if I make some innuendos. <laughs> yeah. So my godfather gave me 5 million. Uh, you know, like, like, yes, no, no. Say that so again, sorry? Says, um, Say that again? Sorry? Say that my coach gave me five million. Okay. Five million, yes. So he has done, uh, we've set, we set that one to him the last two weeks. So he has submitted oh. the pardon. All right, so they sent five million to the son. The son says last week, you know, he has submitted for the pardon. The whole money that they agreed was 10 million naira. Now, the first thing he said was, um, I don't want anybody to know I have a phone. Number two, EFCC froze his accounts. They saw some money. Then Bob begged them and paid them some money to drop charges. EFCC carried his cars. He initially said EFCC saw some money and he paid EFCC. In the same breath, he's saying that it's legit. Okay. Now, when he was on this call, someone entered the apartment. That means he has like a housekeeper or a maid. Obviously, he was not in prison. And then he used his mouth to say that he was not in prison because his godfather said never. He is not going to prison. Do you understand? So now, for those of you that want to say, okay, this is AI generated, we need forensics. Do you understand? We'll take this to any lab so that they can authenticate if the call is true or false. Now, for those of you that are saying I defame Femi Falano or Faust or anybody, honestly, I didn't call nobody's name. Do you understand? Yeah, their name appeared. It's easy. They should go and do forensics on all this call. Then, if at the end of the day the call is true and Bob actually told people about their involvement and maybe later they are not involved in it. Do you understand? Then they can ask Bob Risky that why are you using our name? Why are you spreading lies about us? Do you understand? Uh -huh. Because whether or not very that man is the one that posted it, this kind of news is not good. If it is false, if it is not true, it don't stay on Kufeni with that man. It don't stay in the bad guy with that man. Because now so all this underground story, one day you will just say and prove, ah, no be no be Femi for no way for them money from Bob Risky, no be false. You know, they need to clear their name of this thing. Or instead of saying you go file a charge against very that man for an innuendo. You need to actually clear your name properly from this mess. This is a mess. This is a very big mess. Uh, ring light owners. I saw a saturation yesterday of my name. All over Instagram, Twitter, saying she unkuti betray very dark black man. You betray very dark black man. Because I apologize to my uncle that I did not plan to fight. Young people in Nigeria that must learn something. You know, and I don't understand who has told you people this thing, but you must learn it. Rebellion eh, to rebel is not disrespect. To be rebellious doesn't mean you are disrespectful. I'm teaching you people think that rebellion is to be rude, and that's all you put. That's why you go now come online, waste on a time, just they insult people when you do anything to change your better on a life, but you not get the rebellion to face the system in a way that will bring tangible change to your life. Somebody somewhere don't like you now, and have all this hip hop music. I can't use hip hop music. That's why they love all these hip-hop musicians, all these mainstream musicians, because they help you people mind to be fucked up. They help on their mind to be fucked up. So you people think just to be rude is what you, what you need. Also, you can be rude, yeah, okay. It's a lie, you. If you did inside your house, they wash clothes. Hmm? If they wash clothes, they wash clothes. As you wash your clothes, you throw the water outside the window. What? You don't look, 
You just throw in the water as you normally do. But at that moment, somebody they pass. This water we just want to throw outside, he pour for the person head. She, you're not supposed to tell the person say sorry. And they tell you for Nigerian youth, I not telling that person sorry because they don't mean to pour the water out. I didn't mean to pour it. You can't come pour for your head. Telling that person sorry to Nigerian youth is a sign of weakness. Una de mad. Una de mad. At no point did VDM call me that he wants to fight Femi Falano. At no point did I tell him I want to fight Femi Falano. If Femi Falano now takes offense to our water that we poured outside, it's only okay that we tell him sorry that we poured the water. Case closed. And that's what happened. That is what happened. But you people are so crazy. I don't understand the madness that is eating you in your head. People are mad. Dumb. Dumb and mad in a level I don't even understand. You think I'll be a good friend to VDM by advising him, oh, I'll fight Femi Falano. If they tell me say Femi Falano is for VDM, I'm a good friend by telling him, go and fight Femi Falano. All of you, now who are looking at the fan? You people are so stupid. Or anybody will make, I see people on that uh, lamp. Uh, they are like, yes, clean camera for my head. Say, me, I betray. <laughs> Maybe your day. And as video they talk, all of you will learn. And you will learn the hard way. You will learn the hard way. We are there now, Nabi. Now, don't say to be a great warrior, you pick your battles. Don't let people pick battles for you. Don't let people pick your battles. You have to pick your battles. I did not. Say I want to fight Femi Falano. So why would I let the Nigeria internet make me fight Femi Falano when it's not my plan? If it's my plan, eh -eh. but you people will not put me in a fight that I don't want to fight because I'm a warrior. I know what it means to fight. You people have never fought before. You've never faced battles before. So you don't know what it means to fight, bro. You know? And stop crying more than they believed. Stop crying more than they believed. Well, you can't technically go report something to the media because the media is owned by the same people frustrating you if i have a problem in my street i have a problem with water or something i'm going to report to tvc which is owned by tinumbu what kind of justice am i going to get or i want to expose somebody my local government chairman who's probably in the apc so i want to tell tvc this which is owned by tinumbu tinumbu is going to tell them not to report it this is called underreported news the other one is suppressed news the news actually happens and they suppress it so that it doesn't happen. This is what happened to David and Ifain. They didn't want the public to know the real reason and how this boy died, especially when they found out a journalist went to Banana Island office to ask about the drowning. And they said there was no drowning in their property. You need to know how journalism works. I don't want to hear, give us proof, give us evidence. This morning I posted that Falls is bisexual. Okay, he has, you know, relations with women and men. And someone's asking me to actually give you proof. How do you give somebody proof of someone's sexual orientation? Excuse me? How do you do that? The newsmaker must sue the journalist to court in a civil case. That's how it's done, if it's not true. Every single thing I've reported about Davido, if it's not true, he could have sued me in a U.S. court or a Nigerian court. But he didn't. I see Nigerians say, you know, who wants to sue a mad woman? Who, who has time? It's not about suing a mad woman. If it's wrong, if it's defamation, they will sue, okay? And don't fucking call me mad woman because most of you are stupid, okay? OBO fans, get it into your head, everybody. Mr. Fallon had told Babriski not to come to the National Assembly. If you notice the interview on Channels News, when Shion asked him the question, did he stagger before he made the first statement? Did he stagger, stammer? What, wrong, what was wrong with his voice? Go watch it again. He was clearly lying on that interview. He was the one that gave Bobrisky that legal advice not to go to the National Assembly and not to respond to comments on social media anymore. I have asked him in a post to tell us if he is the one that's the godfather of Bobrisky and the godfather of the Mubad wife, Wumia Debanjo. It's simple questions. Mr. Fallon can choose not to answer or not even reply me. But it's a question. That's not defamation or slander. I simply asked a question. And please don't ask me for proof of anything. Don't ask journalists for the proof. In journalism, we protect the source. You may be the source and you never know when. If you come and tell me something happened, that your landlord was seen selling cocaine to drug dealers in the middle of the night, 
and you told me about this. Would you like me to put it in my story? XYZ told me that her landlord was the one selling the drugs. You'll be in trouble with your landlord. Not to talk of people who are going to come after you. Know how journalism is practiced. It's not a Nigerian profession. It's an international profession. Journalists do not show proof or evidence. The only people we owe proof of evidence is a courtroom or a judge. If we did something wrong, according to the newsmaker's eyes. I'm Dr. Kemi. One more thing I want to say about that is a lot of you are saying VDM gives a lot of evidence of stuff. VDM is not a journalist. Okay, he's not even a blogger. VDM is somebody that does his own thing. An activist, online police, an opinion, a critic. He can show you evidence if he wants, but we have to protect the source. We cannot show you any evidence. The shadow sit in a classroom like me, stop it. And finally, the young man that disclosed that information to David Hondane from the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Air Force, the plan okay, to bomb Niger when they had the ECOWAS crisis. That plan of the Nigerian Air Force, how they're going to fly and what route they're going to take over Ghana and all that to bomb Niger. The person that released that document to David Hondain, you know David posted it. That's one thing a real journalist wouldn't do. A journalist that actually studied, studied ethics. I will not put sensitive classified information online. David posted it. And the Ghanaian president wrote David on his letterhead saying that we are giving you asylum here. I won't be able to protect you any further if you continue this. Ghana is also part of the ECOWAS. And if you remember very well, when David released that document, it's very, very, very easy to find out who gave it to him. He posted the document and he protected the source. But a lot of times some things don't need to be posted at all because of national security. And this is why he's declared wanted in Nigeria, in the Pidom case and others. At the end of the day, that young man was deleted. And that's the thing with the Army and the Air Force, and the same thing with the NSA in America. The National Security Agency in America had Edward Snowden on the delete list for years. Three presidents, and they still can't catch him. He's living in Russia somewhere. At the end of the day, delete means they eliminate you. Okay? So be careful with national security documents. Don't post it if you're an upcoming journalist, a new one. I used to produce it. Everything is on tape. <laughs> the warders then told me that the warders in the prison uh -huh. had told the ones in court not to be striking deals with inmates, to wait for the inmates to get to prison so that the ones in prison <laughs> would strike the deals by themselves. Oh, because we are training the borders. Yes, by the, the, the borders in courts. Yes, even in courts, somebody approached me. You know, the borders. You know, call say who is working on your bill. They caught someone. The person, the lawyer, came and said, "I, I work with the magistrate. If you pay two hundred thousand naira, you will sleep in your house tonight, even though the magistrate had pronounced remanded in prison." Wow. Yes, the only reason it didn't work out is I wanted to go to prison, not to get out. So aside from, so even when you were in prison, what was the condition like? What oh, you get to prison. Wise, health wise, Before food wise. Before you talk about Sancho, corruption is is it, it's an impossibly corrupt system. You get documented as an written as a new you know inmate. They, they 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 take you they take your details and you submit any cash on you. The idea is that inmates should not be in possession of cash. Mm -hmm. You give your cash to the records office. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to the records office to say, oh, I want to make a call. I want to buy cook. I want to buy food. They release to you in bid so that you can't commit any crime. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do it. They, they then have, the, the warders then have convicts. Remember, they're awaiting trial inmates. They're convicted inmates. The convicted inmates know that they have nowhere to go. Someone who has a seven-year jail sentence, a 10-year jail sentence, is loyal to the prison warders. Because mm -hmm. you have that's your home for the next seven, ten, regardless of your sentence. Those ones then come to you, being documented, say, out of your money, you, you will remove 1,000 error to the woman at the records office, taking, doing the documentation. And we're many. When they are looked, so after they take, your, they, take your, they take your pictures online, then, you know, in print, they do double documentation online, and, in print, and then they allocate you to a cell. The prison mm -hmm. warder in charge of the cell, you have to pay that one. As of then, 29, it was 1,000 naira. Per what? Per, per, Just for being in the cell, for nothing. How many of you are usually in the cell? So many, it depends on how many inmates they bring, they bring in. I spent eight days in Ikohi prison. The lowest number of awaiting trial inmates brought in was 16. Sometimes 40-something, sometimes 
You know, forty something in that one cell. No, 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 no. Just oh, there's some. On the first night, you sleep in a well, in a place called welcome cell. What you don't that? you don't sleep like this. You don't sleep like this. You sleep like this. If what, you're like, but, but, like crayfish, when you open sardine, are you, you have you ever opened sardine? <laughs> the way they pack that's ex, I'm not exaggerating. It's exactly. You know, if Bobby spend one night in welcome cell, you think he will come out and speak to anybody? You won't come out. That first night, you keep asking yourself, "Who sent me?" Wow. Because if you're if if I sleep and my head is facing in the direction, this way, the next person to me, the head then is in this okay, direction. So you cannot turn. Is at the back of your yes, head. you cannot turn. You because sleep like no this all night. If there's no how, how you cannot turn. That's how you sleep. You know, the, the, the it's punishment is, and the thing is that once you have money, you bypass all these things. So welcome back. Well, Kemi Oluloyo who spoke um, before the Soyimbo, I think that is his name, the man who had found a way to get into the prisons to find out the problems, the, the corruption in the Nigerian Correctional Center, which is not really a place to correct anybody. It's actually um, a punishment center or an oppression, oppressive center. Now, some people might be quick to say, yes, that is what prisons are supposed to be. Prison is not vacation. It's not an holiday or whatever. Now, you're correct. You're correct. Now, let us quickly go to some few. I'll be taking it from the back. Then we get to the front. I'm sure you must have heard the audio recording and you heard all the allegation. Yeah, or allegations. Or let us say we all heard the audio. Will that audio be investigated? Is it true or not? That remains to be found. That remains to be known. Now, let's take it from the back. There are certain things that Kemi Oluloyo had pointed out. And she gave examples. As a journalist, activist, you should realize the danger that is attached to what you claim has become your calling or is your calling. You are not going to be pampered. You are not going to be put on shoulders and lifted up and uh, they will scream and shout and say, Hey, very dark black man. You will be going through fire because you're going against a system. Very dark black man talked about David Udain, not really the police. I mean, the journalist, I, go, I know his name is Udain. Um, who had sought for asylum, ran here and there, and she talked about how he had released classified document that he was not supposed to release. As a journalist, there are certain things, according to her, that you should not. You cannot fight against the system if you're not ready to lay your life down, meaning you have, uh, how is it called, signed. I'm going to release this. If I perish, I perish. Now, a very dark black man is set for that. He can proceed because, um, as you can see, social media and a lot of people are encouraging him. And at times, this could make you go extra, which is good. If that is your calling, be ready for the sacrifices and whatever it is that comes with it. Um, there are times that uh, certain journalists or certain activists or people who are against corruption, against uh, criminal, political criminals and all of that they they have to run outside of the space that they are in they go on exile that's what it's called even the president of nigeria there was a time he had to run he escaped out of nigeria returned back became part of the system and uh, it is more of him getting tainted and it's not every activist that is really into activism for the sole purpose of activism sometimes some people do this to become popular. Luminosity. By so doing, they believe that they will be invited on the table last, last. They will become governors. They will become president. They will become this and that. Like, okay, come and chop. Talk about Nnamdi Kanu. Of course, the problem was I've uh, spoken to him and dialogue. Hey, guy, calm down on this. Let's give you a portion of the land to eat from, calm down, don't cause us trouble. They must have spoken to Asari Dokubo, 
in time past. Hey, I know you're an activist. You're fighting for your people. Relax. He got a lot of money from two streams. One, from their kidnapping, born cream. He got money from it and the eventual um, government uh, payment to them. That's why and how he could find money to build school, a, a, a tertiary university, a tertiary institution in the Republic. That didn't come from just screaming. He got money. So, very dark black man is a beginner. It's not as easy as a... But social media is a tool that can help you um, echo your voice and re-echo. Social media is what is helping very dark black man. Back in those days, he would not have really made or even hit the surface. Because it takes a lot of arrests, locking up, and a lot of uh, things happening to you. Now, Femi Falano, also activist lawyer. These people have also gone through the same that Very Dark Black Man is into right now. The only thing that Very Dark Black Man requires is proper understanding knowledge. I mean legal knowledge of what and what he needs to do. Now, if we take time to process what the young man who had gone into prison, he said, I intentionally went into prison to get this out. He said a lot of things. He said, if Bob Risk really went to prison, that is the Nigerian prison, his life will never remain the same. He will not come out all bleached. Your life will never remain the same. He didn't go to prison. Yes, the Nigerian Correctional Center talked about VIP section where certain persons are kept. Those correctional VIP section, are they like a mini room or a, a self-contained studio apartment or what exactly is it? They even said that Bob Risky had a maid. We, we, we heard all of that. He had a maid. Now, Bob Risky is saying all of this. Is it true? Or Bob Risky is simply trying to raise his own profile after the time he spent in prison, not really in the proper section where um, those that are poor, those who do not have anyone to spend money, to bribe, to pay prison warders? Did Bobrisky spend time in a flat outside of the prison or in the VIP section of the prison? Like I said, trying to make himself appear important, not trying to appear like he fell on the floor, trying to make himself appear as if he knows the so-called elite and he has godfather here and there who can help him who can do this and that. Now, very that black man said, again, Bob Risky is mentioning Falano, Femi Falano. This brings me back to what Kemi Lawrence, that's what she's called now. She's not Ululoy or Kemi Lawrence. She said, oh, look, 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 look. Fal's a bad man or bad guy. Falari, Falano, that's the son of Femi Falano, is a bi. Allegedly. But she is saying this guy is a bi. That he does male and female. Hmm. I don't know. Is that the reason why Bobrisky was comfortable to call him like, I know now, we know those of us that are high in this thing. We are high up in this thing. We have become celebrities. This is what we do. I was told by this person. I saw pictures or I've met this person. Is that the reason why? Or is it because Files, the bad guy, had uh, done a song with a certain person and he kept on repeating, saying there's nothing wrong with it, that they should allow people to choose their orientation and be at peace with it. There's nothing wrong. Now, a lawyer might lean in that direction because of, oh, I want to be for equal rights and that's what we stand for. Parallel, if you have that uh, foreign influence, I mean the Western influence, and if you do not have any Islamic or Christian principles guiding your life or interested in it. So, even the African or let's say the Yoruba, which I believe Fars is, is a Yoruba, if he says, no, I am not a Christian, not, not a Muslim, I am into the um, Yoruba traditional worship. Still, I don't think 
in fact, not think. It does not accept or permit. It's not a culture. It's not a way of life. It's not a principle. It is not accepted. It is not something that will be smiled upon. So is it that he's saying, look, I am a universal thinker. I lean towards nothing called religion. I care less about it. I'm a human being existing in this world. But if you look at their surname, which are, of course they inherited it, you will realize that they are from ancestors who are Yoruba traditional worshippers of Ifa or some something. That's the truth of it. Maybe he's not leaning towards it. It's okay. Maybe his orientation thought is this and that. How do we connect it together with what Mr. Idris Okuneye, a.k.a. Bob Risky, is saying? Is it true or is it all made up? This is where it becomes confusing. And the only thing that can clear this confusion is proper investigation. Now, Mr. Very Dark Black Man might not be equipped enough to carry out that investigation. He can't just walk down to service companies, I mean, phone call company, and say, hey, give me this, give me this record, give me that record. It's not possible unless they choose to leak, which will be um, very dicey. It will be very difficult. So how is he going to get all of these answers? Well, maybe by putting this out there, putting the doubt there, mounting that pressure and also trying to secure himself so that he does not uh, fall into some kind of a uh, trap or accident you know what i mean so these are some of the things i think uh, Kemi lawyer is saying that there are certain things regardless you have leaked it out you have said this but be guarded on this journey be guarded on this journey be guarded there are people who have put their lives on the line for some activism or investigation and journalism it's okay but be guarded know fully that even the united states of america he, she talked about snowden you all know that the guys from um, this country to this embassy down to russia here and there because he had leaked the criminal activities of the united states government who told you that uh, oh it's only in nigeria africa crime is everywhere it is only when they put a name to it, oh, this is crime, then you feel like, oh, it's crime. Crime is everywhere. It is everywhere, regardless of the country. If not, Snowden will not be running around circles, jumping from one country to the other. Because he had leaked. And many more criminal activities all over the world. So what are your thoughts about this one? You, you heard the audio. Let us meet at the comment section.